Hey everybody, so we're going to look at uh, clustering some room data in Microsoft Azure Machine Learning Studio. Um, I love this tool, I think it's really awesome. Um, it's more high level, like kind of like uh, Dynamo when it comes to ML. So uh, what I like to do is before I go into Python, uh, which is a little bit more complex, I like to sit uh, in here and we'll test out different uh, uh, machine learning models on the data that um, I plan on um, leveraging uh, to kind of get some insights, um, uh, seeing what I can and can't do, see, uh, I'm trying to just test out different models and learn uh, about the data, because it's really easy to do that um, in Azure ML. So uh, what we'll do is, uh, so this is the workspace and um, I can't remember what these are called, but over here to the left, you'll find uh, these nodes, um, but they're not actually called nodes in Azure Machine Learning, but I feel like uh, um, we can, you know, just to stay consistent with Dynamo, um, we could just call them nodes. It's easy enough. They're, they're essentially the same thing. Um, they're a little bit more, uh, they're higher level, they're a higher level than, than let's say, um, um, uh, no, you know, Dynamo nodes are, so they're, you know, like a, you know, they're an entire function of, of things. So like training an entire um, model is really easy because you just, you pull over a classification um, training model or a clustering um, training model. It's really easy to do. Um, so, you know, it's really, it's, you know, 10, maybe, you know, a really intense one that has like, um, um, not not even intense, it just has multiple options. So maybe you're running multiple uh, models. Um, you may have like 20 nodes at that point. So uh, let's get started. So what we're going to do is k-means clustering. Uh, to give you a brief brief overview, essentially what we're trying to do is, um, or essentially what k-means K -means clustering does is it takes a bunch of unlabeled data. So this is data that you don't have a label for. And it... Um, uh, plots it, um, it tries to understand um, with distances and stuff where that data is, and then it groups that information together. So if you have um, a bunch of data over here on the left, um, and then over here on the right, it's um, in, the, in the middle, it's the model. It goes through that, it tries to understand the relationship with the data, where it, where it plots, where, where it belongs, and then it tries to dump it in those bins. Now, you determine those bins. You could say, hey, there's three bins, there's four bins, there's five. Um, but uh, when it is dumping that information, it knows nothing about that information. So if it's a dog or if it's a room type, like what we're, what we're going to do in this instance, or if it's um, a building type, anything like that, it doesn't understand that when it's dumping that information into it. So you, if you have been A, B, and C, it's essentially looking at it as, hey, these, all these you know, data points here all kind of are the same. They're in the same area. We're going to dump them here in bin A. And then, hey, this, these data points over here, we're going to dump them in bin, bin B. But we don't really know what they are. Um, we don't know if it, you know, what it really represents. We just know that there, there's something, there's something relatable between these data points. Um, so that's kind of the premise of K-means cluster, and it's um, a pretty cool uh, um, um, algorithm. And there's a lot of stuff. Uh, a lot more things to do with it. You can get, uh, you can dive pretty deep into it. So I definitely recommend um, going out and, and kind of doing your own research on it. Uh, but here, uh, what we're going to do is start off with data. So um, I already have saved data's uh, data sets over here. Um, if you have a data set, what you want to do is come over here to data sets, and then you want to um, actually load that data set data set um, into uh, Azure ML. And uh, what I use is a CSV. I can't remember the other formats, but generally what I do is I use a CSV and I upload it up here. Um, I'm going to click cancel. I'm not actually going to go to that there, but it's really easy to do. Um, so in the experiments portion of this, what we're going to do now is um, we're going to, in the experiments is what we're in right now. So you can see experiments. So um, that's the tab that we're in right now. Now I'm going to go into my data sets. I have a whole bunch in here. Um, you can see there's samples as well. So if you don't have one, um, I'm a big proponent for 
just developing your own data sets. If I know I can pull it from um, um, the SQL server that I have access to, if I know I, I can pull the data out, um, what I try to do is build a fake data set formatted in the same way so that I can test um, um, a variety of different things on it. Uh, so in this instance, we're actually using a generated data set. In the future, we will use a um, data set that I actually um, uh, will pull from real data. Now, uh, this data set is called Room Data. You can see here I accidentally uploaded a, an Excel file that actually that won't work at all. Um, so what we're going to do is use this Room Data. We'll click it, drag it over. So there you go. It's now um, on our workspace. And now we can start um, plugging in the other nodes. But before we do that, what I want to do is right click on it and then go to Visualize. And we can get some insights into what this data is all about. So um, we can see it's 180 rows. Uh, it's 20 columns. The first column over here, uh, room type. Um, and uh, it's broken out into five different room types. So there's break rooms. There's um, uh, lobby, uh, personal office, um, patient room. And then, uh, and I can't remember the fifth one. Oh, and classroom. So uh, we have all those data points, and they're all kind of different uh, in, in the data that they have. And then within each data point, so like in these room types, they're also different. And, um, and we're going to see the relationship between these different um, uh, room types. And we're going to see where it categorizes uh, these rooms. Um, something I didn't mention was k-means isn't – so. Typically, so this is called unsupervised learning. It's when you take unlabeled data. Now, currently it's labeled, but when we get to the k-means portion of it, we're going to actually use uh, just the categories and not the actual labels. Um, and generally, you will not, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, um, you want it. this isn't something that's massively used uh, in the ML community, just because um, a lot of issues don't um, fall under this category. You're usually doing a supervised learning, which is the most common uh, practice. You're usually doing something um, um, like classification to identify um, something, not necessarily this, but what k-means does do for you is uh, gives you insights into that data, allows you to understand a little bit more into the data before maybe going down the route of supervised learning or something else. But if it is actually um, unlabeled data, then this is definitely the spot to go. K-means is definitely the, the model to use. Um, so, uh, so, you know, here we can kind of get an idea of what's going on. What's the data? Um, what are we looking at? Um, we can click on this and see the mean, the median, uh, the minimum, the maximum. So we can see 50 is the maximum. Uh, standard deviation, um, unique values, five unique values, missing values, which we have none, um, and then feature type, numeric feature. So uh, there, we can go through here and kind of get insights into all this different data and, and try to understand it. Um, if we come over here, click on this, we can see that there's Five unique values, missing value zero, and this feature type is a string. Um, and then down here, we can get an idea of all the different um, rooms. So we have classrooms. We have about 40 of them. Lobby, 40. Um, the patient room, about 40. And then uh, about 20%, uh, which is 36 elements, the personal office. And then down here, the uh, break room, which is about 13%, and is about uh, 24 elements. So uh, now what we want to do is select uh, the columns. Now, when you're working with k-means cluster, generally you do not want to um, um, you don't want to use labels because the whole idea of k-means is you're you're taking unlabeled data and you're trying to kind of group it together um, and you know dump it into these bins and, and get more insight into the data. So if it's labeled, um, that's kind of telling it exactly where it needs to go. So there's really nothing that you would learn. Um, so over here to the left, we can. there's a search panel. And generally, this is what I use when I'm looking for something. I'll just simply search it. So what we're going to look for is select columns in data set. So 
I've um, done select, and then down here you can see select columns in data set. We can see that's in the tr data transformation um, tab, and then or the drop down, and then under that uh, manipulation. So we'll do select data set. We'll drag that over, and um, what's cool, and we'll see this later on, is when you pull this over. So we'll we'll come down here and pull this out, and we'll see that uh, the input down there is green. It says, okay, that's something that it can be brought into. If it's red, it means that it can't. So we'll go ahead and bring this into it. Um, and now uh, what this is saying is values are required. So we'll just come over here, launch the column selector, and we'll simply grab all the categories except for room type. We'll click uh, the check checkbox. Um, now what we can do is the, uh, we'll, we'll do two things. So we're going to grab the K-means, um, machine learning model. So we'll do, um, K-means. We'll see that right here. So it's under machine learning, uh, initialized model, clustering. We'll drag that over. Now the other thing we'll grab is the train cluster model. So that's uh, machine learning under train and then train clustering model. So, uh, and this also needs some inputs, but first what we're gonna do is come over here to uh, K-means cluster, pull this out. We can see uh, right off the bat that it will not go in this input and it'll tell us why. Um, so we'll bring it over here and put it right there. And now we'll bring our data set into this input. Now we're gonna click on this, come over here to launch uh, selector and um now i'm actually going to wait and let's try to so let's run this real quick so down here we have run and um what we can do is we should well let's actually just run everything so let's try to run everything um but first we'll have to select something so we'll come over here um We'll say air terminal and then checkbox. We'll do run. Well, this is actually going to go through and actually train that model. Um, so depending on what you're doing, and what's cool is there's a lot of information out on these different models. It'll explain that, hey, if you do this deep learning, machine learning model, it may take a, um, a much longer time than doing it this way, but your accuracy might um, be less if you do it this way. That's the cool thing. But with K-means, um, and with our data set, which we don't have very many, um, it's pretty quick. So uh, now we'll go back to this uh, launch column selector. And now this um, this was grayed out before, so we can uh, select by name. We'll just come in here and make sure that everything is over here to the right. We can see that's the case. Um, come back into rules, we can see everything's in there. So, all right, so that looks good. So we can click the checkbox. Um, and we can come down here and, um, and start to understand, uh, a little bit about, um, some of these options. So, uh, we can click on here and we can cut copy. We can view the log. We can edit, uh, comments. So there's a lot of cool things that you can do, but you can also independently run, um, a specific node. So by, um, clicking here, so you don't run the whole set of nodes now, now the next bit. So we're going to assign the data to clusters. Um, so we've ran the models, so now it's time to assign them, which will give us a data set that we can view and start to understand the um, information um, and how this uh, stuff was clustered. So go to assign column. Or sorry, assign data to clusters. So we'll grab that, pull it over here. Now, what we want to do is pull this down, plug it into here, and then, which will give us our labels. And then um, we'll pull out this portion, which is the trained model. And then um, what we're going to do is uh, run this again. You'll see those little clocks, and it just means it's running up here. Up at the right, you can see running time. So it's at 10, 
um, seconds. So it finished about 12 seconds. Now what we can do is come down to this assign data to clusters, right click on that, and then we can visualize it and we can see what's going on. So uh, currently we just have one huge cluster and then um, another one. So this isn't very insightful. You know, I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. Um, so now what we can do is go back into the train or actually into the k-means and we can configure some of the information there. Um, so, you know, we'll set this to three. And then we'll come in here, click run again, and then we'll see what happens. So previous run was about 12 seconds. So um, I assume it's going to run about, about the same time. So let's see. So it looks like we're going over by three seconds, probably because we're grouping. Um, we have a couple more groups there. Now um, we'll come in here, visualize that data, and we can see what's going on here. So uh, we can see how it groups the information. Uh, so cluster um, zero, uh, we can see what's going on there. Cluster one is kind of within both of them. Uh, so, so pretty interesting. Um, and now what we can do is actually see this data. Um, uh, oh, another thing that you can do is you can right-click these and go into results, go to visualize. It'll show you the same information. Um, now what we're going to do is convert this to a data set so that we can review it. So if we go into the um, search bar up here, we can go to convert to, oops, convert to, data set and we can simply plug that into it and then um, we should be able to just run this uh, node here so that was done in about four seconds now what we'll do is just right click that we'll go to results and then we can visualize it um, so we have a room type, so we have that parameter back in there again, because if you remember earlier, we plugged the uh, um, initial data set that we pulled into, um, we plug that into um, the uh, assigned data to clusters, and then we um, um, also plugged in the train clustering models, uh, which then outputted us a cluster and also you know, uh, gave us the ability to convert it to a data set that then we can review in this um, window here. So we have our break room over here. Um, we have all the information about this um, um, data set. And then over here to the right, you'll find assignments. And then you'll find uh, distant to cluster. So distant to cluster zero, one, and two. So those are the clusters that we have. Now, sometimes when it comes to k-means, it's really configuring the settings that you have. So those options that you saw in the k-means clustering node, it was just going in there and configuring them differently. So um, in a previous video, what I've done is um, we got some insights in this data and we saw that um, initially it kind of grouped everything into three groups. Um, uh, and so that's why I started with three groups here. And um, now this data set though is a lot more, um, it's a, there's a lot more data in this data set than in the other one. So we have 180 rows. Um, so really, it's just at this point, it's just trying to figure out the relationship between multiple room types um, or multiple um, of the same room types. And so what we can do here is start to understand the um, relationship between these rooms and other rooms. And, you know, are they the same? Are they not? And if, it, you know, if we see the clustering like we initially saw when we, been, we, put, a, we put them in two bins, um, it, it didn't really give us a... Um, a good output. Um, the, the second clustering we did was a little bit more informative and now we can see the assignments over here. Um, you can see that it assigned things, so in the break room it actually assigned them in different, um, so like here it's one, you know, it signed it to bin one instead of bin two and it could be the data points looked exactly, you know, or, or you know, much closer the, to the um, other um, room types than it's um, 
than its uh, other than the other break rooms within this data set. But you can get insights in trying to understand the distances between the points. What's you know what what makes these break rooms different from the other ones? What makes them special? Um, is there ways that we can optimize our Revit templates, or um, is there ways for us to understand how to, you know, maybe for generative design, how to automatically, you know, for specific types of buildings with these types of break rooms, can we then generate um, what's typically in those buildings um, from this data set? Now, we, you know, like by understanding um, what's typical to a building and its break room, um, you know, generate a break room based off of that data. Um, so we can kind of scroll down this, see the uh, the uh, you know how it categorizes stuff. You can see classrooms categorized in bin two, and um, if you remember, if you watched uh, my other video with Python and stuff, um, and, and I was plotting out some of this information and clustering it, um, and some you know some of the information or some of the uh, um, room types were are grouped together. Um, so that's, you know, the same thing kind of going on here. It's finding that, hey, these classrooms and break rooms are not far from one another. And um, they're, you know, there's a relationship between them. They're, the data that represents them um, are somewhat the same for some of these room types. Um, so we're going to group them together. But again, you know, this isn't something that you may apply to a project or, or um, will leverage uh, officially to... To, to, um, to some type of model that somebody is going to use um, live, but if anything, it'll give you insights into the data so that you know what to do in the next steps. Because um, a lot of ML is just understanding the data, researching it, um, feature engineering, so optimizing your features, which are like all these different categories, categories so saying hey maybe this feature doesn't really belong here maybe it's irrelevant it, it it doesn't matter for what i'm trying to do some of the you know some of these things like plotting that data or using k-means is a way to understand the data a little bit more um so that you can make those decisions in the future when you're when you're developing the, the machine learning model that you're officially going to launch and, and leverage um so we're going to go ahead and close this. And then finally, what we can do is convert this data set um, to a CSV. And then we can leverage this data set outside of Azure ML. So we can dump this out and then um, we can use it. You know, maybe, may, you know, maybe we get what we need and then we want to plot this information in Python. So we'll do a convert to CSV um, and then in Python, Python, we'll just use pandas to read that CSV. And then we can then start to plot that information and understand it a little bit more. Um, so plotting the different assignments and how these were assigned and then start to try to understand uh, more about that data and these room types and why they are related the way they are. Um, so, uh, so that's it uh, for this video. Let me know if you have any um, questions. Um, you know, leave a comment or reach out to me directly. Um, if you like these videos and want to see more, definitely um, like and share um, and uh, subscribe. Uh, make sure to hit the notification bell and. Um, and thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next one.